Oh, g'day, Stephen. Um, what do you got for us today? Hi, Tom. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a class model, which is commonly called a domain model, which describes the uh, the important entities in a domain that you're modeling. We're going to be looking at the, a parking meter system. Okay, so we're just creating a package in the, the project browser. I see it's going to house our class model. Yeah, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change to a perspective, a UML perspective, and we're let's go for a, a structural uh, set of diagrams. And over here, we've, you can see that we've got uh, perspective has changed. We've got toolboxes um, there with all the class elements in there. I'm going to create a diagram, class diagram, uh, class model. And let's name that and create um, the diagram. We're just going to drop some classes from the um, toolbox onto the diagram. Let's make the first one the actual uh, parking meter. And the the parking meter is made up of a number of different things. Let's drop another class on there representing uh, the display. And let's line these guys up. And another important uh, element uh, is the payment reader that uh, customers or motorists will be um, making so payments. That's pretty neat. I, I saw when you dragged the display, you actually got those those guidelines to, to make sure those elements are all lined up correctly. That that's handy. Yeah, a, a, a new feature in in um, version seventeen, Tom, and really I think it's one of the most fantastic uh, features. It means you can just line things up uh, quickly, and you don't need to you know, worry about uh, spacing and things, and your diagrams will end up, uh, you know, looking very, very professional right from the jump, which is, uh, you know, really saves a lot of time. And I'm going to drop uh, some notes in here uh, for that uh, payment reader. Now, the payment reader, uh, interestingly, has got to do, be able to do a couple of things. It has to be able to read um, credit cards or debit, debit or credit cards. And it also needs to do, to be able to do with uh, deal with near field communication readers so the kind of thing you've got on your phone uh, that allows you to use your phone to tap uh, and pay which is called a near field communication reader so um, we're going to put those two uh, glasses in and a um, a common name for this near field communication reader is uh, an nfc so i'm going to put into the alias um, nfc reader and we're going to line those up with a generalization relationship saying that those uh, types of payment readers choose a line style here of a tree style vertical which saves a lot of time lines these up and makes uh, the diagram uh, look a lot neater uh, i'm going to use a aggregation um, connector and uh, I'm going to um, drop that parking meter and to the display. And this is showing some structural relationships between the various elements. And everyone out there that's used a parking meter knows that there is a display and a, and a payment reader there. The other important uh, element in this is the, the motorists themselves, or it might be a passenger that's uh, paying for the um, uh, for the, the, the parking. And of course, we've got the um, the vehicle. Um, the vehicle itself and again we use the the alignment you can see how powerful those things are giving us the vertical spacing the horizontal spacing uh, all ready to go there and let's drop some association relationships the uh, motorist and the vehicle are obviously associated in some way as an owner or a passenger the motorist and the parking meter are, are associated the other really important class on that sometimes people forget to put on which is kind of like an abstract class is is the um, the parking session itself. So uh, we, when we park our vehicle, we uh, are using a, a, a parking session. We're, we're putting in a, a, a time period there. So again, I'm going to put some notes into uh, into there to explain what a parking session is. And um, let's go and also put some notes into this near field communication reader because people may not know what that is and it's very good when you're modeling to include 
these notes. I, in my own uh, times when I'm modeling, I, I find that people don't put these notes in and can get, uh, get confusing for readers. Uh, the other thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to put in, uh, change the display of this vehicle and kind of spice up my diagram a little, if you like. I'm going to put in a, um, an alternate image on this diagram. I've got a, uh, just one image loaded here. And of course I could have hundreds of images um, that have come standard um, available on the website, or of course uh, you can put your own images in there. But there I have my, um, my vehicle. I can just resize that uh, down a little bit. Um, and uh, that makes the diagram look uh, a little bit more um, attractive. The other thing is that um, to make this diagram, uh, at the moment it's conceptual and it's you know useful for people to be uh, looking at, but to make it a bit more useful, I can put some properties in for, uh, for various elements. For example, um, this one here, um, if I look at the uh, features window, the parking session uh, would typically have a start time and that might be um, might be a date uh, time. So where did that features window come from just then? Ah yeah very good question I had that set up uh, because I've been doing some you know work earlier this morning uh, and that was open but I can I can always open any window by going to the start ribbon um, and these panels here in the all all these uh, items in the all windows panel so I've got design and I've got properties that's actually the properties window and I can open it by up again the features oh, next to it I think I oh sorry there. my mistake yeah the features window there um, so that's the features window um, and so that can that can just open up um, at any time you can put it you know hide it away um, and it's useful to uh, again in time there I'll put those things in there and that's a date time as well so yeah and this uh this features window like many other windows can be you know docked in, in into any position i can move that around if i want to but that's a, a kind of a basic uh class model there and i can you know i can change things i can say look this parking meter uh thing is you know a particular particular part of the model and i can change the color of uh, of that and say look this you know this side here um, i'm going to change to another color and that again that spices the diagram up a little bit as well um, i can also put um, i can also put other properties on these uh, these lines um, multiplicities or people might uh, know them as cardinalities i can put something at the source and the target end so at the parking uh, the parking meter end uh, my multiplicity um, would be typically be one and at the source end over here the multiplicity would be um, you know zero or more um, sessions so I can save that and you can see they pop up there on the uh, on the diagram and I can la label this as well and let's just say that a parking meter registers um, registers uh, parking sessions so that's a, a basic uh, diagram, Tom. Obviously, you know, if I'm going to continue this on and and uh, and you know make it more elaborate, there's lots of more things to add. But they're the the basic parts of a uh, class diagram. So what what can I do with this now? So now you've done the the work of modelling up this class diagram. What 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 could be the next steps? Right. Well, the the, the next step is probably to be sharing it with the uh, with an audience, with a stakeholder group, or the, you know subject matter experts, and just making sure that. You know, these are the things that uh, that, that are important uh, to them. And if someone was looking at it, they might say, "Well, hang on a minute. Where's the, you know, where's the payment? We haven't got a payment in there." And so we could then, you know, add embellish it a little bit and put, um, you know, put uh, a payment uh, class in there and, and and link that up as well. And uh, you know, we've got that done there. But the the class model itself will act as a uh, you know a sort of a guide for most of the other work so uh, in other models you know previous video we did a use case model uh, in other videos we've got um, you know uh, requirements models and state machine models and this is uh, this is incredibly uh, useful to direct uh, that work I can also use a very powerful feature um, which is a, uh, a transform and I can transform this model uh, into other types of models. For example, I could change it into a um, a logical data model. I could change right. it into 
an XML model for if people are, are sharing information via, you know, XML schemas. Um, so there are lots and lots of things that it can do, but it's a primary a primary model for communication and, you know, sort of like the, 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 the diagram or the model that binds all the other models together in a way. And it's a very good starting point, making sure that you're on track with your audience, that these are the things that are important to them. So with these transforms, that probably sounds like an, an interesting topic for another video so you're saying that i can transform this into say a c-sharp diagram and then yeah. maybe a mysql diagram and then that's generate right. the code out to to implement both that's right tom there's there's you know a, a huge amount of functionality um we've just scratched the surface today looking at this and you're right let's just have a look at um the transform selection and or the, the the templates um here we can see that we've got a whole whole range of uh different things as you said we can go to tables we can go to um, C++ C sharp um, DDL and in fact Tom you can write your own templates we commonly do that we write templates specifically for uh, particular purposes and we can you know create our own uh, language output if we'd like if we you know want to do uh, something uh, particular with that model so lots of flexibility there and you've just touched on some of the you know the very powerful features of the uh, of the tool and they are, they will be the subject of uh, another video. Sounds great. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you very much for your time there, Stephen. My pleasure. Thanks, Tom.